starter Pokemon really suffer from only getting the Blaze, Overgrow, and Torrent. They really need to just stop doing that, in my opinion. Pro Nuzlocke ranks every starter Pokemon. Let's hop right into this and see what we think. So Nuzlocke's are like purely RNG, right? Most of you the time. You have no control over the terrible encounters you get. You eventually just get crit and die. There's and some you know control. What? There might actually be some truth to that if you're terrible. The reality is <laughs> Nuzlocke's offer a lot of skill expression in every decision along the way. And the very first and sometimes most important decision in your run is your starter selection. Yep. But which starters help you sweep through A lot the of time it's one of the most powerful Pokemon you're going to get. I'm here with my 5,000 hours of Nuzlocke experience. And it's the only one you can control unless decision. you're good. You go no dupes class. Unless you're doing the thing where you just decide your starter based on your trainer ID. Or you're doing a randomizer or playing a ROM hack or this video is pretty useless actually maybe subscribe and maybe soon they'll pop up a video that'll help you with your very specific rule set anyway i'm pokemon challenges and probably the best nuzlocke in the world and this is the nuzlocke starter pokemon tier list here we Let's go for some basics real quick i'm basing these ratings on hardcore so itemless and over level -less nuzlocks of vanilla mainline pokemon games also quick disclaimer i have very little experience with gen 8 my rating on the sword and shield starters is going to be very loose with that all being said Let's start at the very bottom of the tier list with the F tier. And at the very bottom of the list is everyone's favorite dinosaur, Meganium. Garbage. Whew, they really did this guy dirty. I think the first thing to understand is that pure grass types are just really not good. It's not a good typing. It has too many weaknesses, and too many of those are common weaknesses. Meganium in particular here also gets some really terrible offensive options, especially in earlier games. It's, it's basically a tank support kind of pokemon with a terrible defensive typing additionally it's just also straight up weak to the first two gym leaders in the game it's also slow as shit and like all the light screens and other random support moves that it gets are usually not worth the tempo that you lose to set them up it's simply not good in early mid or late game but you know what else isn't good in any stage of development testicular cancer that's right one man every hour is diagnosed all right we're skipping cancer. his ad national to manscape superior back into it the other pokemon joining is pure grass brother down in f tier is superior, superior. is that superior bad is a pretty to be fair to these pokemon too many of them get better with their hidden abilities so unfortunately they all have either torrent blaze or i don't know what the grass one is because i don't pick grass starters that often overgrow they all have those and those abilities kind of suck they can be useful if you're smart with them and like you pre-damage a pokemon that's about the only time they're really good but we're really basing these starters purely on type and stats and move sets like their abilities are just meh Problem in the like superior if you could get contrary on it it could be better now it's still not that good in a nuzlocke um, but if pokemon did decide to lower your stats that could be pretty good. It's better. It's a little bit better in like a competitive setting where there's a lot of stat drops and stuff going on. Pure grass, more like pure, pure ass. Haha. -ha. Am I right, guys? Bad move pool, super replaceable with other grass types. Whatever gyms it does beat in Unova are better beaten by water Pokemon anyway. Just don't pick Snivy in Gen 5 on any merit, except that it does have the coolest personality out of any starter Pokemon. Let's move up to C tier. Grid Ninja is actually such a sad case because it's really cool on paper fantastic design extremely fast it's hidden ability is amazing if you can get it with hidden ability it's a lot better Light to watch in smash bros someone needs to add to randomizers the ability to get hidden abilities i don't know if that's a possible thing to do it's probably not well it's definitely not until hidden abilities were created but post hidden abilities being created if you could randomize to where you could get hidden abilities it makes so many pokemon so much better if you could get their hidden abilities what the hell is this moveset this just gets nothing good. Dark types are normally great because it covers the common psychic and ghost types that you normally fight in like a lot of mid and late game situations, but Greninja is so frail and it just doesn't mm -hmm. do well in the region that it's in. The other it's gotta be fast do and do so damage. Much better in X and Y, and there's almost no point where. And bulky Pokemon are better in Nuzlox. It's better to have bulky Pokemon because you're gonna be switching a lot and taking a lot of hits. Unless you play on Switch mode, which you might as well not even play the game if you're playing on Switch mode. If you're playing on Set mode, as you should be, just saying, because it makes it more fun and more challenging. Bulky Pokemon are better because you're gonna take more hits. Greninja actually gets to use its like pretty good offense and speed. Following in C tier is everyone's favorite. If you're playing on Switch Pokemon mode, Charizard. Greninja's probably better. Man, this thing is a disappointment. The additional flying typing does it no favors whatsoever in a region where there's a plenty of flying types for you to pick up. It's a pretty poor learn set, and apart from Erica, which also gets swept by like a Pidgeotto or any of the thousands of poison types in Kanto, 
it, it doesn't really help you with any major fights in the region. If this thing isn't on a first edition PSA 10 card, then probably don't pick it up. Again, I'm not really sure where to put the sword and shield starters as I don't have a lot of experience with them. Inteleon is probably somewhere here in the list. Water types, especially pure water types, mainly benefit from being a good defensive typing, so mm -hmm. you want them to be more on the bulky side. So having a glass can water type like Inteleon doesn't really work most of the time. It's pretty similar to Greninja in that case. Uh, next up is Incineroar, uh, which is an incredible VGC Pokemon with all the support stuff that it gets, but because in a Nuzlocke you can't get Intimidate and you can't really utilize Parting Shot or anything like that, it doesn't really get to use its full potential as it does in VGC, or not at all because you're mostly fighting single battles anyway. It's yep. just pretty slow, its typing doesn't do it anything. It's just a bulky supportive mon. Totems. It's just not that great. Rillaboom in, probably in playthroughs, it's just a bulky physical attacker, that's all it is. It sits around here somewhere as well. Because, at least as a part to its other, like, pure grass type brothers, it's got a decent coverage, I guess. Topping off the pure grass type, though, is Sceptile here. Sceptile is quite a bit better in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald than it would be in the remakes. Because before Generation 3, every grass type move was special, including mm -hmm. Leaf Blade. And Sceptile really wants a good special move, and it had that with Leaf Blade, and it didn't really have that in later generations. So it just lacks a good offensive main stab move later on. Uh, running out C tier are the two bulky water types. Blastoise and Feraligator. And they're both here for pretty similar reasons. Bulky water types are great. They, they really are. But there are so many options to replace these two with even guaranteed encounters in your run. Gyarados. Blastoise is outclassed by Lapras or Vaporeon later in the game. Feraligator can just be replaced with a Gyarados. So you're not really getting any value picking these up because you can get something that fulfills their role later on. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's move up to B tier though with uh, an interesting one in chest. Starter Pokemon really suffer from only getting the Blaze, Overgrow, and Torrent. They really need to just stop doing that, in my opinion. Obviously, it's going to make some more unbalanced than others, but it gives them a chance to make a, a, the starter Pokemon a lot better by giving them a different ability or a unique ability. I think they just need to stop doing the Blaze, Torrent, and um, Overgrow thing. I think it just makes starters so much lamer. It's not. Fighting is a pretty great secondary typing, but most importantly... It's one of the very few actual good counters to Lissandra's Mega Gyarados in X and Y, which is otherwise incredibly scary for you. Turns out, once you pair a grass type with like a decent secondary typing, it actually becomes okay. Next up is Blaziken, which I was expecting to want to place higher, but the more I thought about it, I realized, I mean, firefighting is a fantastic offensive typing, but unfortunately Blaziken just doesn't get too many good moves to actually mm -hmm. utilize that typing, and it's a little bit slow. I mean, in Ruby and Sapphire in the Elite Four, it's really good because it has three really good type matchups, especially in Oraz, where it also gets access to like good physical fire moves. But apart from that, it just doesn't come to the full potential of what a firefighting type could be doing. Following that in B tier, we have Samurai, who in concept is pretty similar to its Gen 1 and 2 counterparts, with a big difference that in black and white, you don't actually get a guaranteed Gyarados or any other guaranteed bulky water at pretty much any point in the game. Bulky waters are just very hard to come by in Gen 5. This makes Samurai a pretty viable option, and it's great against Clay. Torterra's up next as the lowest ranked Gen 4 starter. Torterra's access to great grass moves, dark type coverage, and very early Earthquake gives it a fantastic matchup against lots of Sinnoh gyms. The only thing it's lacking is speed, which it makes up for with pretty good bulk. And topping off B tier, we have Typhlosion. Turns out copying Charizard stats one for one and just taking away the flying typing just makes it better. Typhlosion is just the only good fire type that you get in the barren wasteland of encounters that is true. <laughs> it's also got a good with Bugsy, which is one of the harder gym leaders in the game. And it also does pretty well mid-game against Jasmine and Price. This is probably the best Gen 2 pick in my opinion. Let's get serious though and move up to A tier. Ambor. My god. Gen 5 starter design is incredible. I love all of these. Ambor has damage and it has bulk, but it's lacking speed, but it can make up for that with Flame Charge, which it gets really, really early. It's just a menace both offensively and defensively against most of the gym leaders in Unova it has either a neutral or a good type matchup against. I love this Pokemon so much. Yeah, I'm really actually good. really sad that the polls didn't vote for Ambor to be my starter for the upcoming polls decide the Nuzlocke challenge. I'm pretty sure I'm going with Samurott, yeah, but and eh. Probably the best Gen 5 starter. The next starter up is Dekadui. Dude, it's pronounced Decidueye. You know that, right? Decidueye? It, it, its name comes from Deciduous and I. You know, Deciduous like trees and then and then I. Because like, it's, you know, it's an archer. It's looking with its... You know, I never thought about it like that. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. It does make a lot more sense than Dekadui, huh? I guess we should just base all of our Pokemon pronunciations on what the words come from, right? That, that's how the names are made and that, that, that's just how you should pronounce them. That's the easiest way. You're right, but... 
I guess I gotta go back and re-record the whole Blastoise thing I did, because I pronounced that name wrong. Wait, what do you mean? Well, you know, because it's like, it, it's pronounced Blastus, right? Why the <laughs> hell would it be pronounced Blastus? Blast. Tortoise. And then tortoise, right? You don't say tortoise. It's tortoise. So it's gotta be Blastus. But, that doesn't... You can't... That, that's not... can't believe I kept calling it Charizard the entire time. It's obviously Charizard. Decadu has one thing that makes it great, and that's the ghost typing. Immunities are really, really good in Nuzlox for ensuring safe switching and pivoting. And the ghost typing has two immunities. One of them is against normal, which is like the most- I really like Decidueye. Decidueye is one of my favorite, favorite starters. It's really cool. It has pretty good matchups against several of the totems. And I don't know why we don't do ghosts more often. Raichu, which is pretty terrifying. Up next is the best Gen 6 starter, Delphox. It's not as fast as you would hope it to be, but it actually gets more outspeeds than you think. More importantly though, Fire Psychic is an incredible offensive type combo. There's pretty much mm -hmm. nothing that resists it. This thing just comes out and one-shots things, left and right. It's great. Also, its pre-evolution is great furry bait if you're into that. Oh, gosh. Why? Also, its pre-evolution is great furry bait if you're into that. I, I don't know. I can't deliver this properly. I, I, I say it so seriously, but there's no indication that I'm not being serious about it. I can't just cut that line. It's so stupid. The best starter <laughs> in Alola is Primarina. For pretty similar reasons as Delphox, actually. It's just a great... Water fairy is so water strong. Fairy. But Primarina also has all the benefits of a bulky water type. Yep. It's just... Super, super solid and reliable. Let's and its hidden ability is really good if you can get its hidden ability. The best Gen 1 starter, though, Venusaur. It actually suffers from a lot of the same issues as Meganium, which we've ranked dead last here. But it's just in a much different game, which makes all the difference. And it's got it poison. so many good type matchups in Kanto. The reason Venusaur is placed so highly, though, is actually Misty. I think Misty is one of the hardest gym leaders in Gen 1, and no Pokemon does as well against her at that point as Ivysaur does. Her Starmie is a menace with any other team composition. Venusaur solos Lorelei, and let's be real, probably also Bruno. You can even teach the Sunny Day and Solar Beam in the late game to actually have like some offensive oomph. Coming in the top of A tier though is Empoleon. Oh baby, we love Empoleon. Empoleon's my boy. Water Steel type. They've done some really creative water types. They've done Water Dark. They've done. Oh wait, no, they haven't. They've done Water Fairy and they've done Water Steel. I thought there was more, and they did Water Ground. And like grass, it's like literally grass, grass, grass. It becomes grass dragon, grass, grass ground, grass fighting, grass goes, grass poison. So like they got a little bit better. Fire, they've, I think is probably the most bland. They literally did fire flying and then they did fire and then they did fire fighting, fire fighting. And where's the other fire fighting? Oh, fire fighting. And then they did fire psychic, which is cool. Fire Dark, which is kind of cool, but it, let's look at this thing. It should have been firefighting. Let's be honest. They designed it with the intention of it being firefighting. It's got a wrestling belt, and it's a wrestler Pokemon. Doesn't make sense that it's dark, to be honest. And then fire. The only reason that it's not firefighting is because they did so much firefighting already. It's there because it's a steel type, and steel type is the best type in the game for Nuzlocking. It just Steel's, has so many reasons. I love Steel Empoleon. Water is incredible typing. So tanky, and yeah, it has good special attack. Specs for this in Celestic Town to power up its surf. Uh, the only downside really is that its pre-evolutions are pretty terrible. Okay, it's time for the mm -hmm. cream of the crop now. S tier. Pokemon that are just in their own league and that transform the game when you play it with them. I'm pretty sure this is where Cinderace sits. Incredible speed, incredible offense, and access to bulk up in its learn set means this is probably utterly broken. Even without much experience in Sword and Shield, I can say that this is the best Gen 9 starter. Next up is an all-time classic. Gen 8. <laughs> the great thing about Swampert is that it has exactly only one weakness, grass. Yep. Except for exactly your rival fights, there is no boss fights in Hoenn that actually wield grass-type moves. It makes Watson completely free, Mudshot is a fantastic move to mitigate its speed-type weakness, and Swampert is just unkillable. It 1v1s like every Pokemon in the game. Yep. And don't even get me started on its Mega Evolution. And finally, the best starter in any Pokemon game, in my opinion, is Infernape. What? A monster. This is everything Embor and Blaze can dream of being every night. The raw power of Embor, combined with the better type matchups against gym leaders and elite four members that Blaziken has, all that combined with a much better speed stat, and to top it all off, access to two 100 accuracy, 120 base power physical moves, and flare blitz in close combat. Infernape is just in a league of its own. Yep. It breezes through Sinnoh, and there's simply no offensive Pokemon that matches it. Additionally, I agree. though. Sinnoh is the region that is known for having like no other fire types. You can't replace Infernape. I think out of all the starters on this list, Infernape is probably the only one that you pretty much have to pick. And that's it. Here's the full list with the best of each generation highlighted. Tell me what you think I got wrong in the YouTube comments. I look forward to reading absolutely none of them. Shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. And uh, I suck at YouTube outros, so I'll see you guys next time. All right. I agree with a lot of his takes, honestly. I mean, he... 
knows what he's doing. Obviously, he has a ton of Nuzlocke experience. When I do my tier list, I don't do it purely based on Nuzlocke's. Um, I do it based on like what I like about the Pokemon, whether I think they have a cool design how and how powerful they are. I kind of try to take in a lot of stuff instead of just purely how good they are in the game I'm playing in Nuzlocke. But I enjoy his thoughts. I always like getting more information from him because obviously he has probably the most Nuzlocke experience of any Pokemon player in the world. Thank you for making that video. I really enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed my reaction to that video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure that button's down here and watch my other Pokemon reactions. Make sure to go check out Pokemon Challenges channel if you haven't already. Let's be honest, you probably have. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.